All right, there you go. Let's get to some of the questions you've been leaving, though, for us. We're here every Monday at 7 p.m., remember, for the Dr. Janine Show. Here is a question from Muhammad. So Muhammad asks, and by the way, thank you very much for your question. He said, I've asked my doctor about parasites, and he said that it's not likely the problem, but should I still be concerned about them, Dr. Janine? Well, that's a great question, and thank you for that question. So when we're talking about parasites, unfortunately, they're very much underdiagnosed, and a lot of practitioners don't believe or sort of buy into the fact that there can be a relationship between, let's say, parasites, intestinal parasites, worms, it could be candida, but I always found in my clinical practice that parasites had a lot to do with what was going on in the gut, and this is something remarkable enough I have firsthand experience with, you know, my hygienist. So one day when she's cleaning my teeth, she was saying, "Yo, oh, I have a story for you, Dr. Janine." And oh, okay. And you Tell have me your to story. sit there and listen because she's got her hands in your mouth. Anyway, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do about <laughs> right. it. Right. So, and, um, so tell me, tell me. And she said, "Well, I was having, you know, IBS types of symptoms, and I went to my doctor, and my doctor was more in depth. So it was a functional practitioner, it's someone who who practices functional medicine, and and typically a functional practitioner will do more." in depth testing when we're talking about IBS types of symptoms and parasites. So she lives in Ontario here in Canada and so she had, I hate to be graphic, but we're gonna, we're talking about it, so we're gonna go there. So she had her stool sample and that's typically how parasites are diagnosed. She had her stool sample taken and the doctor said, I want you to split your stool sample because we're gonna send it to two different places. So one of that part of your stool sample is going to go to our lab, our provincial lab. The other one I'm going to send to a more specialized lab, and it's very expensive to have these tests done, and she shared with me. It's pretty in the hundreds of dollars. So the, the, the same stool sample was sent to the other lab. So test results came back, and sure enough, from the provincial lab, they couldn't find anything there were there and yet she has symptoms by bs and this is wow. what's so common and this is my point that you can have a stool sample done and not all the parasites are tested for usually they test in in a provincial test for about 30 or so parasites nothing was found in her case now the test the more detailed test that she had to pay a lot of money for found four different parasites so her doctor treated her for those parasites and lo and behold her symptoms disappear Hmm. So my whole point is that so many times the parasitic infections or, you know, that disease, that imbalance in the microbiome, which we talked about a few moments ago, is underdiagnosed. And this is why people aren't getting the results because the doctor says, no, you don't have any parasites, you're good. You know, and then they try and it's like always shooting at this target and missing and trying to shoot at the target again because they can't get that proper diagnosis. And that's why I say, you know, when you're using some of the natural substances, whether it is the black walnut, whether it is the oregano, then you're not really doing yourself any harm because these are natural substances and certainly work with your practitioner and if you're not sure and if you've got questions you know always always ask and reach out but without doing the harm you can have those positive impacts at killing those bad bugs like mother nature intended so that you're then you're actually dealing with that that IBS from maybe what was the root cause being those parasites so that's why it's so important to know and always advocate for yourself for your own body if you're not feeling well and you you've been told that oh no it can't be that well it could be and especially that that rings true when it is a parasitic issue Great question from Mohammed. Thank you. Francesca also wrote in and left him a question for us asking, is exercise helpful for IBS? Yes, yeah, so studies have actually shown that exercise can be very helpful for IBS. And that, that's the great thing about exercise is that no, no, in the fact that it is anti-inflammatory, but it also helps to relax the nervous system. So whenever we have an outlet for our stress and for a lot of people, active exercise, and it need not be, you know, intensive, intensive hit training and, and you know, a lot of cardio. It could just be a walk. It could be yoga. It could be Pilates. But even, you know, if you go for a run and you are a runner, it's very helpful for IBS. And that's because it is 
relaxing to the nervous system and it is an outlet for stress. So when we talk about, you know, the de developing of stomach ulcers, which is a side topic, we'll do a whole other video on, on stomach ulcers. But what they found is that, and there's a great book that why zebras, I believe it's why zebras don't get ulcers, is because when they have an outlet for stress that, and this is true in the animal world, when there's an outlet for stress, the ulcers don't develop because there's that outlet for stress. So I think the same is true with IBS when we have a good outlet and, and exercise can be a really healthy outlet for our stress that this can be, you know, one of the ways certainly to support your body through your IBS symptoms and actually to get at, at a much better result in terms of being able to be symptom free. In the last couple of weeks, and if you watch us on YouTube or on Facebook, and please remember to subscribe, remember to like the video and click that bell also so you can be reminded of future episodes.